This is me on the way to the supermarket during the coronavirus pandemic. My flesh has not seen sun for weeks. No, I'm just kidding. A lot of us are buying a ton of groceries, and we're getting a lot of advice on how to safely handle it all without contracting COVID-19. Canned goods, just giving them a wipe down. But how much of this stuff is necessary? Hey, I'm Yara, and I've been wondering, what precautions do we actually need to take when handling all this packaging, plastic, bags, containers, and miscellaneous? Miscellaneous? I decided to call up a food safety expert who could clear things up once and for all and help me put together a definitive guide of safety tips in the age of coronavirus. My name is Kristen Gibson. I have a PhD in environmental science and microbiology. In other words, she knows a lot about viruses, which is why I asked her about what I should be doing when I bring bags of groceries back from the grocery store. minimize my trips to the grocery store, right? I think everyone's trying to do that, so I try to go once a week. By and large, transmission of this virus is going to be person to person. My plan is to always go kind of first thing in the morning when I can, because that way usually there's minimal people there and I can kind of be assured that they've done like cleaning and disinfecting probably recently in the store. I actually carry a set of Purell wipes with me because I'm a mom. So I wiped down the cart handle before I touched it. But when I was pushing the cart, I was very, very conscious about like not touching my face. If someone with coronavirus touched a jar of strawberry jam on the shelf of a supermarket, and then decided not to buy it, but then you touch that strawberry jam jar. I will tell you right now that coronavirus will not be surviving on that jar of strawberry jam. Because what's been reported is a very ideal situation. They've controlled the environment that those surfaces are in where they're trying to figure out how long coronavirus survives. This virus is a respiratory virus and it has what they call a lipid bilayer or an envelope around it. And the envelope is really susceptible to being dried out. If it's in an environment where you have like a low relative humidity, so it's a really dry place. These things can dry out this envelope. Once that's damaged, it's no longer infectious. If someone's looking at the apples you want, like give them their time and then go get your apples. The social distancing is the main thing. I did hear that some grocery stores are actually starting to label their aisles one way, which I think is a great idea. A lot of us like to like touch different fruits and vegetables to make sure they're firm or they feel right. I'm still gonna pick my apples. I'm still gonna pick my avocado. Again, ingestion is not gonna be the root of exposure. I think everyone is probably just more aware like, hey, I shouldn't be like picking and handling and doing all this stuff all the time. There's not a lot of data out there on survival on food surfaces. I use the plastic bags at the grocery store. These are bags that have been taken out of their own packaging and put in the grocery store, right? They're not being handled by everyone. I don't bring my own bags because most of them aren't washable. Some of them are, but how often do you wash them? I go to the grocery store, I get my things, I bring everything inside. I put it down on the counter and then I wash my hands. And then as far as the food goes, I put it away how I normally do. I don't wipe it down because I don't think it's necessary. The scenario I see is that hand washing still comes into play, right? And if it makes you feel better to use a Lysol wipe or disinfecting wipe on the outside, I think that's fine. I really think this is a personal choice. I don't think we, we have this like abundant risk of every single item in the grocery store being touched by someone who is infectious and then you getting that virus and touching yourself because you should be washing your hands. Once you put your groceries up, you can sanitize your counter, right? That's where the virus could be as well. I would recommend that. The way viruses behave in their structure, they're just able to survive longer on those less complicated surfaces. Okay. We hear a lot of talk about porous surfaces and hard surfaces and how it might survive better on one versus the other. Fabrics, carpets, wood, cardboard, paper bags, all of those are porous surfaces. They'll absorb water, they absorb liquid. And then you have a hard surface, which is like your countertop, plastic cutting boards, or you have stainless steel surfaces. So they will hang around a little longer on non-porous surfaces, like stainless steel and plastic, and not as long on porous. They're harder to get off of porous surfaces because they absorb into the surface. And that also means they may not be as readily transferred to 
you if you touch that porous surface. So the virus might kind of like hide inside of the pore. <laughs> it could, yeah. <laughs> it's dangerous, like you could get sick. Right, by ingesting the chemicals in the soap. Yeah, I would say rinse your fruit and vegetables before you eat them. Stop being a punk and wash your hands. <laughs> Pick your favorite song and just do it and make it a habit. We're all isolated. Why not start a new habit in, in the house now? Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Hope you're all staying at home to prevent the spread of coronavirus. All of the facts and tips offered in this piece have been fact-checked and confirmed by a number of professors that we reached out to just to make sure the piece was extra airtight. Remember to wash your hands, stay at home, and don't touch your face. Stay safe.